Jesus born to set thy people free From our fears and sins release us Let us find our rest in thee Israel's strength and consolation Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent time. This fourth Sunday is the last Sunday of Advent. In order to recall what we are celebrating, especially on this Sunday, we have to go back and remind ourselves where we began from. The first Sunday of Advent is a Sunday which we, on which we celebrated hope, the first candle which signified the hope that God promised us a Messiah. He promised us a Redeemer. And with the hope, we were awaiting for his coming. And so the readings of the first Sunday so much emphasize that there is a time. The time is going to come when God will send the promised one. And that's why we celebrated hope. And the second Sunday of Advent, we celebrated the love of God. And on that Sunday, we had John the Baptist preach to all of us in a loud voice, prepare the way of the Lord. He preached a baptism of repentance. I said, repent for the Lord is at hand. And on that Sunday, we celebrated love that God looked at us in our iniquities, looked at us in our sufferings, and he promised to come amidst us. And out of his love, we were not going to pay him anything, but out of his love, he decided to come amidst us. And out of the same love, he called upon us to repent and be ready to welcome him. The third Sunday, the Sunday we celebrated, the previous Sunday, we celebrated joy that we were waiting for the Lord. We are now joyous in awaiting for the Lord. The reading, especially the first and the second readings, emphasize rejoice in the Lord always because the Lord is among you. And that is the joy with which we celebrate Advent season. That we who are awaiting for our Lord and Redeemer, we have that joy that indeed our God does not abandon us. And this Sunday, the fourth Sunday, we celebrate peace because we are celebrating the Prince of Peace. On this Sunday, in the Gospel, we, we see the two Testaments meet. The Old and the New Testament meet. And in meeting, a new life is born. And the new life, the first creation, the first born of all creatures, Jesus Christ, is set in our midst. In order to understand the gospel of today, we have to look back during the time of the king David. David, having ruled Israel, there had been a time when Israel was divided. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The people of God were divided into two. When, when David comes in as a king, he unites the two kingdoms into one. He sets a new city at Jerusalem and David brings the Ark of the Covenant and he brings it into the city which is known as the city of David, Jerusalem. But we have to recall, before David brings the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, the Ark of the Covenant spent three months in, in, in Judah the southern kingdom. And after the three months, the ark was carried to Jerusalem. When it was brought to Jerusalem, the scriptures tell us David rejoiced. He danced. And most of the people thought like he was maybe running mad because he rejoiced with all his mighty. This is exactly what we are seeing in the gospel today. Mary, not only carrying the covenant of God, 
not only bringing the covenant like Moses carried, no, like David carried the ark of the covenant to Jerusalem, but Mary carries the covenant of God, which is the word of God made flesh. So Mary, in fact, is the new ark of the covenant. Elizabeth, standing with John the Baptist as the last prophet of the Old Testament, they meet Mary, who is now the bearer of the word of God, who is now the carrier, the tabernacle, the ark of the covenant. And we should realize that Mary too spends three months with Elizabeth and afterwards she goes back to her home. This meeting of today is a meeting that should bring us joy and it should bring us maximum joy because the Lord we have been awaiting for is in our midst. Like in the words of Elizabeth, the mother of our Lord has come in our midst. John the Baptist realizes that indeed there is one who is greater than all the prophets in the womb of Mary. And that is the joy with which we celebrate today. That indeed the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace is in our midst. But as we are celebrating this Sunday, there are things that we have to realize. One, God chooses the lowly. He does not choose people from palaces. God does not choose people from well-to-do families or well-to-do cities, but the lowly and from the lowly cities. The first reading gives us an example of Bethlehem. The lowly among the clans of Judea. From that, God chooses. And he says, from you, Bethlehem, I will bring, you will give birth to my son. And from that moment, you will be counted great among the tribes, among the clans of Judea. And this is a call to each one of us. And also in Mary. Mary was not among people who were from great cities. She was not from the palace. She was not a princess. But God chose her because she was humble in heart. We too, as we are awaiting for the coming of our Lord, as we are preparing to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must also put away our pride. We must also humble ourselves. And above all, we must come to God with a clean heart. God is going to choose to come in our lives if we have made our hearts clean. If we have made ourselves lowly in the spiritual sense. This, in one way or the other, does not mean we should not work to be rich. It does not mean we should sell off whatever we have and remain with nothing but lowliness of the spirit. And this is what is going to enable us indeed to say we are worthy to be partakers of the sacred mysteries. This is what is going to enable us to say we are celebrating worthy the nativity of our Lord. Lordness of the spirit. Secondly, the second reading talks about the sacrifices. God was not pleased with the sacrifices. And Jesus Christ, out of his love, comes out and says, My God, my Father, here I am to do your will. Many times we Christians focus on the sacrifices. Many, many times I hear Christians say, I was in Mass. I attended that Mass. But sometimes we even attend Mass like wood, like furniture, like the chairs. Mass is said we are also present, but indeed we don't participate. Those are the kind of the sacrifices that didn't please God. But God is calling upon us to do his will, like Jesus Christ. He leaves the heavenly realm and comes to dwell among us. But why does he dwell among us? To do the will of God. As we are preparing for the birth of our Lord, we too are called upon to do the will of God. Our preparation should not only be focused on the material things, but should also be centered first and foremost on the will of God. 
And lastly, as we are preparing for the birth of our Lord, where I pray from on this Sunday, we organized that this should be the Sunday for the Good Samaritans. We who God has enabled to have more than others, we who have been privileged with goods, either clothes, either food, either time, this is the Sunday on which we too, like Mary, should carry that food, carry those clothes, take them to somebody who doesn't have. The church where I pray from, we have put a basket and we expect every Christian to put in something such that as Elizabeth was with joy for receiving Mother Mary, we too must bring that same joy to our brothers and sisters who are sick, who are suffering, who are in prison, who are abandoned by giving them something in return. We too should be carriers of the good news. We too should be tabernacles, the acts of God's gospel, of the God's word. Which word talks about love one another as, I've lo as I have loved you. Which word of God is sending us that whoever looked as, uh, looks at us should be able to have that joy either in what we give, in what we speak, in what we dress, or by our appearance. We should be like Mary, the Ark of the Covenant. Today, we celebrate the Prince of Peace who is in our midst. But this Prince of Peace is also calling upon us to be bearers of the gospel, bearers of good tidings to everyone. The Lord be with you. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne.